welcome to the Prophetic Voice of Victory. I am Apostle James Duncan, and your, my co-host, Prophetess Mercy Miles Jenkins. Amen. Uh, we are, you know, we are just back in America from this tour of South America, uh, Guyana, Suriname, and so we want to bring you, uh, as you, uh, to tell you some of the things that God has done. What he has done for those, for them, he's going to do for you. And amen. Hallelujah. We want to let you know that uh, crossing over from one place to another place, how what, what t- takes place. And when you're going to a territory, or you got to send you to some people, how to deal. Amen. And in uh, Matthew chapter 10, but before we get into the 10, uh, Matthew chapter 10, verse number 1. Uh, Prophetess Mercy, you can uh, bring, bring some greetings. Okay. Um, good morning, everybody. How you all doing this morning? Listen, it's a blessing to be here this morning. We're in the land of the living. Many people didn't make it, but we are here. And so we thank God for life itself. Amen. It's good to see you, Sister Leslie. And I see you here this morning. We appreciate you. Listen, I uh, want to remind you this morning, okay, to make sure that you come and like and share. We want uh, many people to be blessed uh, by today's broadcast. We have declared the month of November to be the month of evangelism. And so many people need to hear this word. They need to be empowered. Uh, we're here to build up your spiritual life. And so um, through the various teachings and impartations, there have been instructions uh, many of you have commented and uh, actually DM'd me and let me know how much uh, these instructions have guided your life. And so this month is the month of evangelism. And so I trust and believe that this word is going to guide you into witnessing to people this month. And some of you may have a, a desire and a passion, but uh, you know, you don't, you're looking for the boldness. And so we want to empower you today. And so, uh, you know, if, if you're empowered, somebody else needs to be empowered. So make sure you comment, you like, and you share. We want to make sure that we reach as many people as we can this morning. All right. That's important. Um, good morning. I see you all coming in now. Good morning. I know with Facebook, the algorithm is a little slow. So let's activate the algorithm. Okay. Let's do that. We did a fabulous job of activating it yesterday. And let's continue to do that. Okay. Let's continue to multiply. Good morning to you, Pastor Sandra. Good morning to you. Woman of God, may the Lord bless you. Thank you all for your giving and missions. We appreciate your giving and missions. It goes a long way. And we appreciate you for it. Um, and so good morning to you, uh, Sister Rashana. Good morning to you. And um, Sister Denise is here this morning. Good morning to you all. We appreciate you. Amen. Amen. We are talking about this month, uh, this 11th month, the month of November, the month of evangelism. Evangelism. Now, what is evangelism? It's simply spreading the good news spreading the good news of the of the kingdom spreading the good news of our lord jesus spreading the good news and that is you see uh, that is the the reason why jesus came into the earth the apostle paul said this he said he said jesus came into the earth to save sinners let's examine it to save sinners and then he said this of which i am chief Apostle Paul, the great Apostle Paul, who wrote who wrote two thirds of the New Testament, he said, "I am chief," or in other words, he was the chief <coughs> sinner. Why did he say that? Why did he say the chief sinner? Because he persecuted the church. He persecuted the people of God, and he had some of them thrown into jail. And he had some of them even murdered. Stephen, when they when they stoned Stephen in the book of Acts, stoned him to death. The people, Apostle Paul, got the legal authority. He got the papers, the legal papers, and and the young men, the them that stoned Stephen to death, took off their clothes and put it at his feet. 
It was the authority that he got and is sown Stephen to death. And what did Stephen do? Bleeding, pain. He didn't do anything. All Stephen did was to preach the gospel, was to preach the good news about the kingdom of God. It was to preach the good news about the Lord Jesus Christ, the, the savior of the world coming and, and causing uh, us, mankind, to be reconciled back to God through him. And that man became uh, a, 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 a living soul. Man became connected back spiritually to the, to the God the Father that our, our sins are going to be forgiven, our sins are going to be blotted out. That, as the Bible says, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. What is the gospel? What is the God? The gospel is the good news, is the good news that Jesus came into the earth to save sinners. He died on the cross of Calvary. He paid the price for every human being that would ever come into the earth. And he, he paid the price for every sickness, disease, and infirmity. He paid the price. It is said that the major roots of the diseases, all the diseases in the earth. They came from 39 roots, and Jesus took 39 stripes. He took 39 stripes. That is why Matthew chapter uh, 10, verse 1, he, the, the Bible says, amen, just prophets, don't, uh, prophets begin to read. Okay, Matthew chapter 10, verse 1, and when he had called unto him his 12 disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Amen. This give us the, the truth, the idea and the truth that Jesus has found over all manner of sickness and disease, over every spirit. He has power over Satan, and he has power over demons, regardless of what rank they have. And all manner of sickness and disease and, uh, and authority. He gave them power. He gave them power. Because when he came into the earth, he came to do the will of God. In, in, in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 7, he said, Then said I, Lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me to do thy will. He came to do the will of God. And the will of God was for him to pay the price for sin. The Bible says, For all, have sinned and come short of the glory of God. How did this happen? How did all, how, how did all uh, sin and come short of the glory of God? How did all sin? Why? Because Adam, the first man, and Eve, the first woman, Adam and Eve, they begin to procreate after they sinned. They were living in the in the Garden of Eden. The Bible didn't say how long they were living there. But Satan came, used, used the body of a serpent, and lied to Eve, tricked her, and she sinned. Because the commandment of God was, don't eat from this tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Don't eat of it. Because the day you eat of it, you shall surely die. You shall surely die. So evil was in the garden. Because trees and things came to into manifestation. 
many days before man came. A matter of fact, uh, when when he when he made man and Adam and Eve came into being, they looked he, and he told them, he said, "This herbs is your food. These these trees." And that was created on the third day. They were there waiting for them. You see, when man shows up. Man is always the last to show up. That is God template. That is God blueprint. God, man is always the last to show up. Because man uh, 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 was created last in this creation. But man was created the, the head, the head of the creation. The head of the creation. Man was created. And man was created in the image of God and according to his likeness. No other creation, no other uh, animals or birds or, or fishes, none had, uh, was created in the image and likeness of God. They were created how God wanted them to be created, but man was created in the image and the likeness of God. So when man sinned, which was the head of creation, everything, came into manifestation. Sin, death came because they activated evil. They acted disobedience. And this is the gospel. Why Jesus had to come, the second Adam, he had to come to pay the price because the wages of sin is death, the Bible says. But the gift of God, the gift of God, is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord eternal life is the gift of God. God did not create man to die, but to live eternally. And through Jesus Christ, after he paid the price, Isaiah prophesying in Isaiah chapter 53, verse five, he said, he, he said, he was wounded for our transgressions, talking about Jesus, and he was bruised for our iniquities, not for himself, but our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we were healed. And this is the good news. When he came, he suffered over 2000 years ago, born of a virgin uh, and suffered and the Pontius Pilate, he was crucified, according to Isaiah, prophesied, and he was buried. After he was crucified, he died, and he was buried. And the third day, he rose again from the dead. And the day of Pentecost, he ascended to heaven. And now he is sitting at the right hand side of God, the Father in heaven, making intercessions for us. He is interceding for us. Over 2,000 years, the ministry that he was engaged, that he is engaging is intercession for us. So he's interceding to see the will of God, what he, what he died for, what he caused to come uh, that, uh, when he died and, and uh, after he was buried, the third day, he rose again to give life and that more abundantly. That's why he said, I am come that they might have life and that more abundantly because God in, in, in his uh, divine uh, providence did not create death for man. So the devil tricked Eve and Adam willfully did it. And so he activated a, a debt because he activated evil. Evil was there. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil was there, but it was dormant. It was dormant. And when man sinned, he activated it. That's why salvation is there forever. And for everybody, it is there. But when we receive Christ, as I was saying, when we confess our sins, receive Him as our Savior, life and that more abundant is activated and that is what God wants us to do, to live forever. That is His heart, that is His mind. And Jesus came to provide a way for it. 
And that is the good news we have to share. Because when we are hearing about wars and rumors of wars, we are hearing about bloodshed, we are hearing about poverty, we are hearing about sicknesses and disease, uh, uh, cancer that is, uh, is harassing and causing havoc and destruction to people untimely, uh, uh, men and women uh, of, uh, of God and the people in the world. But Jesus paid the price for, as he sent them out, Matthew 10, to heal all manner of sickness, disease, and infirmity, every sickness and disease. When he sent them out, he showed, he showed the authority that he has. God has given them authority and power. And they went, and it happened. And so he's sending you this month, this month in the month of evangelism, make sure you tell somebody about Jesus. Make sure you pray for somebody to sit because you receive him. And the Bible says, many is receive him, to them give him power to become the sons of God. With the faith of God, you have to go now and activate uh, salvation, activate the healing because it's in you. Prophetess Mercy. Amen, amen. And this is a great time for you guys to um, share the broadcast and let people know that we're on. Share this broadcast with your friends and family. We appreciate you for doing so. Amen. And so, yeah, so this is this is a month of evangelism to so take the charge to share the good news, the gospel, to preach it, to share it, to tell it. Okay. And so you may even just tell your testimony. A lot of times we forget, we forget ourselves that we are a miracle and we can share in our testimony of how we came to Christ and what Christ has done for us. And a lot of times we have to reconnect to that moment, what it feels like. I say that because sometimes as Christians, the longer we are and the longer we don't sell, uh, we don't minister salvation, the more removed we are from the experience. And now we become, oh God, I don't want to be, I don't want to appear to be one of those, you know, evangelicals. I don't want to appear to be, you know, uh, a Bible fan, but I don't want to appear to be, you know. And so now we're thinking about ourselves and we're not thinking about the other person. And so if you just go back and you just remember the fact that you yourself is a miracle, that Jesus came in your life as a deliverer, like who is Jesus to you? Who is he to you? Right. Tell the testimony that he came in your life as a savior. Tell the testimony that he came into your life as a deliverer. Tell the testimony that he came in your life as one that forgave you for sins that you was holding on to, that you was guilt ridden. OK. And that you was on your last uh, um, your last nerve and you was falling to pieces and you was in a horrible pit and he came and he rescued you. Tell the story. Amen. And so, you know, if you're thinking, how can I approach people? You know, we move in the prophetic. So every time I've evangelized, especially when I'm on the street or something, right, I have to key into what God is saying. What is he saying about this person? And to uh, begin to have a conversation with them. If they're in the store, if they're, you know, they're in the line ahead of me, I have to think of what can I have? What can I say as a, as a, um, as a uh, conversation starter? Um, to release the word of the Lord and to minister salvation. Let me tell you something. We was, in, we was in Suriname and we was in Guyana. And let me tell you, okay, I see an apostle minister to multi-millionaire salvation. And I seen the minister to people that is, you know, Joe Blow from the street, okay? Like ain't got nothing, whatever, okay? I seen him. Okay, minister to those in high, who are high officials and minister to those who are just down and outs. Okay, those that people would overlook and think they have nothing to give, nothing to contribute to my life. Okay, and uh, the way that apostle moves, okay, is their souls. Okay, so we're not even looking at who the person is, all right, on the outside. They are a soul. They are a person. And we never know if this was their moment and their only moment. We never know. And so if they cross our path, then we must take the opportunity to open the door for them to walk through salvation. At least give them the opportunity. If they say no, 
it doesn't matter. You've opened the door. You've given them the invitation. You've allowed God to use you. Amen. And so I was, I was tremendously blessed. Listen, I'm using apostle words tremendously. I was tremendously blessed to see apostle move, street preach out of nowhere, just out of nowhere. I was like, what's going on here? Just out of nowhere, right? Because he has a serious burden. And, and to me, that's, that's very unique for an apostle to have like a heavy burden for salvation and souls. If you notice, even on this program, he doesn't close out without giving people an opportunity. Okay, so that's what it's like him ministering at the pulpit or ministering in this space. But what I'm saying is I'm a witness to him doing it in like regular everyday life outside of ministry, pulpit ministry, outside of speaking engagement ministry, just us handling business and just going about our business and our daily lives. I've seen them witness and minister salvation. Even on, I think it was even coming coming up to the last day. Yeah, it was the last day. Even coming up into the last day, um, he ministered to a young lady and um, she walked away. She prayed the sinner's prayer and she received salvation. She was on her job. She was, um, she was a, um, a waitress. She was serving us. And she walked all the way into the back. Next thing I know, this other lady comes in to our table and begins to clear our plate. And I knew, because I watched her face, I knew, I said, you know what? This other girl done told her, okay, this is the power of evangelism. Okay, so she got ministered to, okay, and she received Christ and she was crying. And it had an impact when she went in the back. This other lady said, okay, I need something too. So she quickly came up because I saw her. She had a big old smile. And she came to the table, clearing the table. And the pastor just began to engage in conversation. But I said to myself, this woman has come specifically because she wants a change in her life. And she knew that change was at the table, just like the woman at the well. She knew change was at the table. And so yeah. she came and um, Apostle just ministered to her. And I said, that's exactly why she came. She wanted to be ministered to. And she gave her life to Christ. She gave her life to the Lord also. She was opened because she had seen what had happened to her friend. And so uh, there were some things that was revealed to her friend and she was like, wow. And so she came behind and said, I want that. So uh, there was a, a, a planting of a seed and there was a watering. And so when she came, she came even ready and open. Her heart was open to receive salvation. And I was just blown away, but that was the power of evangelism. You know, you minister to one, you don't know how far it's gonna go, okay? And so her friend, her coworker, her co-worker on, on the job now, okay, uh, was open and had a desire to receive Christ. And so um, it was a blessing to just see how this all unfolded. It just all unfolded. And so it comes from a heart that just wants to minister to souls. And so I received the impartation. I was like, okay, I'm learning and I'm studying. So trust and believe this is the month of November evangelism. Uh, really tap in, okay? You know, uh, uh, we all tapped in for the 3 a.m. prayer. Let's tap in for the evangelism, okay? And come back and share your experiences and, and, and what's been happening since you've been ministering um, salvation on the streets, in the, in the grocery store, when you're on the bus, uh, you know, when you're driving, you know, share those experiences, okay? And, um, and see what the Lord does. Amen. Because you might be, you might be, you might meet somebody that might be the last, they might preparing to commit suicide. I know in New York for years now, um, in a time in the seventies and the eighties, one of the biggest churches in the entire New York state, in the entire New York state, the founder and his wife, this woman, uh, the, uh, she became his wife. He went and he was evangelizing, even in a hotel situation, and he rapped at the door. And this woman that was, was independently wealthy, well-dressed, independently wealthy, she was going to commit suicide. So you don't know the person in front of you, next to you, 
what they're going through. Why did you come into this space? Why did you come into this space? And you have Jesus inside of you. Because when you, when you receive Jesus, you're carrying him. You're carrying the Savior in you. You're carrying the healer and the deliverer in you. You're carrying the miracle work in you. You're carrying the creator of heaven and all that you inside of you. The one who create wealth, who create riches, who create the earth and everything. You're carrying him with, with you. He is in you. You're carrying him. And you do not know why you, you, this person is next to you. And the Bible said, one plant, the apostle Paul said, and another water, but God give the increase. So you don't know if God is using you to plant or is using you to water, that he's going to get the increase. You don't know. And you don't want to miss an opportunity. If they resist you, praise God. There's somebody else, sometime else. You're going to meet her right then. You, 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 all you're required to do is it's give the good news, spread the gospel, go on to preach. He said, go into all the world and preach the gospel. You're not using a mic. The, 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 in other words, the world, the art is your pulpit. You, it, if the car is a pulpit, if the plane here is a pulpit. I, I remember going and sitting, I had a, a certain seat and then somebody wanted that seat because it's close to somebody else. And they gave me the seat way up in front, way up in the, in, in, in the front. And when I sat there, I was reading uh, a book of a, a, about the prophetic. This is my testimony for prophets, more she can share and, and come. I'm reading the book on the prophetic. And I see this person next to me is looking at the book. So I see the interest of the person. So I said, God, what is this? Because I know why it is I was moved and come next to this person. Why, why, why? And she so said, God, what is this? And he told me the name of the person. He told me, call her name to me. I said, okay. And if God calling a name to, to the person, he wants you to, he want me to minister. I said, okay, put the book down. And I asked them, I said, because she is, she is, she is, she is coming. She's looking at what I'm reading. So I, I said, um, who is Leslie? And I think she, I can't remember clearly. Uh, she said, what about Leslie? And I told her what God said to me. And she said to me, Leslie is my stage name. <laughs> wow. Leslie is my stage name. And I said, stage name. And then so I remember, she said, even the person I'm dealing with don't even know because she was going out and dance. I'm going to tell you the details. In the night, when he gone to work, she's doing this sex, or this, other, this, other, this other life. Wow. And so God began to minister to her and she received Christ as her Savior. Wow. So you do not know. We call it prophetic evangelism. You are yeah. trained prophetically. You could ask God. They could ask God for a word for some people. You could ask God, what is this person's situation? I was ministering Sunday to, to, in a place where uh, they don't understand the prophetic. And this, guy, this person come up and I hear Daniel. And they got said, like a Daniel. This, and it stopped me. The parents, his name is Daniel. Mm, Daniel. And so God began to do things. Why did he save you? Why did he save us? It's for us to go and tell. As Prophet Morris was talking about, tell it to somebody else. Mm -hmm. I share my testimony already with you. I share my testimony in, in, in Guyana and Suriname that I used to call myself a Rastafarian, a cult member, worshiping a man. I, I, I was that, but I didn't know when I was saying Rastafarianism and, and spreading that demonic news, yeah. when I was doing that, I, I was an apostle and a prophet and a, a pastor tied up 
an altar tied up. I was tied. The rain me was tied. It, I had to be loose. And it's the good news. Jesus loose me by somebody. And I'm going to tell you who the person was. My, I had an uncle who's a high official in Ghana. High, high, super high official. So we had security taking place. And I get, I, I, I was, I'm living there and I intrude the security like a normal person. And he brought Jesus to me. Mm. Oh, wow. Security. When I was going astray, God know, he knows how to plant somebody in your life. To yes. And so he could, he planned you in somebody's life to bring it, mm -hmm. your family, your bloodline, where you work, where you teach, where your neighborhood is. He planted you in a plane, in a bus, in a car. He planted you. So give what you have. Give what you have. And you're going to give them Jesus. Amen. Prophet is mercy. Amen. Amen. I, I, I feel, listen, out from my belly flows rivers of living waters. And so this week, I want you to activate and stir the waters of evangelism. Okay, you are a refresher. You have the capacity inside of you to restore and to refresh other people. Okay, you have the ability to revive. Okay, uh, the rivers of everlasting life, the fountain of everlasting life is within you. And so when you speak, you have to trust and believe that it's the greater inside of you that is speaking and that you're anointed to minister salvation, even if it's just for your testimony and asking uh, that we have a thing called uh, prophetic question. Okay, asking questions prophetically by the spirit, uh, just like Apostle was saying, who is Leslie? Okay, that's asking questions prophetically that will open a door. Okay, and so just be ready, just be open to allow God to use you. And I want to at this time just do a quick plug in. We're going to be starting the prophetic school because I just realized I know some of you is like prophetic evangelism, what's that? And uh, you know, some of you uh want to develop your um prophetic hearing, your prophetic um skill set. Um and so we do have a prophetic school, as you've seen, that we had graduated 42 in Suriname. Um, this was our first year, and then we graduated 46 in Guyana. Um, and so we want to open our opportunity to you. So just know in the new year, in the new year, January, February, um, the dates will be released. Just know, because uh, we're late in registration right now, but just know um, that we'll be taking on registrants. Okay, so make sure you prepare yourself financially, okay, so that uh, you can ready yourself and be in the class, okay? You want to be in the class, okay? I was telling an apostle, I said, these students are sharp. Like, they, like, prophetically, they hear and they see sharp, sharp, sharp. And it's a blessing to see the alumni students from previous years come back and participate and uh, be a part of the conference and be a part of um, just uh, congratulating the new graduates going forth. It's just an awesome community to see how people are committed and dedicated to this prophetic walk and the prophetic community. Amen. And so um, continue to stay um, plugged in, stay locked in, because like I said, the program will be starting in the new year. And I don't want you to miss this opportunity, okay? Because it happens once a year, once a year in the new year. So if you don't get into this class, then it'll be the following year. And you, that's not what you want to do, okay? All right? Amen. So, 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 so let's pray for the people that they have a heart uh, and they obey God and they participate uh, in evangelism, especially this month. And that's when the end of the month you finish. But this is the month we want to start you up. This is the month we want to you to launch into this program, into the God's assignment of evangelism. That is where the heartbeat of God is. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, 
but have everlasting life. Have everlasting life. And this is what the good news God wants you to carry to the people, beginning in your own household, beginning in your bloodline, beginning in your neighborhood, wherever you are, the supermarket, the grass, you can engage in conversation. Jesus came. She did not know this is the Savior. This is the Christ. This is the author of life come up and when we go we 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 are carrying him he's in us the savior the art of life the creator of heaven and earth the healer is right in us and how do you expand how do you grow is by sharing his word and doing what he said lay hands upon the sick they will recover the word you lay hands you speak the word in faith and see them recover Proudness mercy Amen. Amen. Father, we just give you praise this morning. We thank you, God, that you are the giver of life and that you gave your only one begotten son for us that none shall perish, but we should receive everlasting life. Father, we thank you, oh God, that you have ushered us in, um, into the, uh, into, into your, your presence. And we thank you, Holy Spirit, that uh, uh, you've given us the ability to decree and declare a thing, so shall it be established. So we decree that our whole entire household is saved. We decree yeah. and declare that now in the name of Jesus, uh, every family member, we decree saved, our children, our spouse, our, our nephews, nephews, our nieces, our siblings, our, our cousins, our, our parents. We decree and declare, oh God, that salvation runs through our house, oh God. In the name of Jesus, we decree and declare that to be so. Father, we ask that you open our hearts even now. Even Jesus said that, that uh, my food is to do the will of my Father that sent me to do a work and to complete the work. Uh, and so, Father God, you sent us to do a work. We decree and declare that we shall complete that work um, and that we will do the work of the evangelist, we yeah. decree, oh God, that we are those who are wise and therefore we win souls. We ask, oh God, that you'll touch our hearts and our minds, oh Lord, and that you'll place a burden upon us, oh Lord, for the souls. For your word says that the labors are few, but the harvest is plentiful. Father God, we are those who are signing up as those who are the laborers. We desire to do the work of the evangelist. We desire to minister salvation. We desire to reach the lost. Um, and Father God, um, you said that you give us a heart's desire. This is our desire. Our desire is to please you, is to do the work of ministry. Yeah, yes. This is what I mean. This is where we feel satisfied. We are yeah. satisfied by ministering to a lost soul. This blesses us emotionally and spiritually and mentally. This is what we want to do. We are not those who are resistant to doing this work. We are those who have a desire and who have a hunger to serve you and to do the work of the evangelist. And so Father God, we ask that you quicken us, oh Lord, quicken us yeah. and, and reveal yeah. to those that are in our in our space, yeah. in our presence. Yeah. Oh Lord. Yes, that Lord. has a, a cry, that has a, yes, a that has an issue that we can speak life into. Open our hearts and our mouths to be able to speak. And Father, we're not going to worry about what we should say. For in that moment, that time, we know that you will fill our mouth with your words, and that words, those words, will minister to the hearer powerfully. And so, therefore, we decree and declare, O oh God, uh, that their hearts is open to receive, even if it's just a seed. Uh, and that has been planted, that they receive the seed and that uh, if they've been watered, we thank you. And we thank you, God, that you'll add the increase. We thank you for the testimonies that will come forth, the testimonies that will even encourage us to say, okay, I'm going to go out again. Okay, I'm going to do it again. Okay. Encourage your people, oh God. Encourage them as they take a step forward and be bold and witness in the, high, in, in the highways and the byways. Minister to them. Um, with boldness. In Jesus' name, we thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 And, and those just lead them to Christ that are looking and are not saved or backslidden. Just lead them to Christ. Amen. Amen. And so if you're here this morning and you're saying this word is for me, this word is ministering to me, that you maybe, maybe one time you was a Christian and maybe you said, you know what, for whatever reason, 
Maybe it's the people. Maybe it's what you was going through. Maybe it was a death in the family and you felt betrayed because they, they, you know, you couldn't understand why they had to leave. Whatever the case is, I'm giving you an open invitation. The door is open. Jesus is at the door waiting. And so I'm opening the door for you to receive your savior this morning. And so if that's you, I want you to come forward and repeat this prayer. And if this is the first time you've been on this broadcast and you're hearing me speak this morning, I'm inviting you, I'm inviting you to give your life to Christ for we never know what may happen, what may be today or tomorrow. And so one thing we want to be sure of is that we have eternal life for there is life after this life It's either in heaven or is in hell. And so let us, let us give ourselves to the Lord Jesus Christ for he has purposed us to be here to follow after him and to share about him. And so if this is you this morning, I want you to just repeat after me. Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you now as a sinner and I ask you to cleanse me of my sins. Cleanse my heart and purify my heart with the blood of Jesus. I invite you into my life and I, dec- and I accept Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior from this day and this day forth in Jesus' name. Amen. So if you said that prayer, I want you to definitely DM us, either Pastor or me, DM us and let us know because we want to support you. This is just the beginning. This is the beginning. This is the awakening. This is just the beginning. And know this, all of heaven is rejoicing. And we're celebrating with you. And so uh, please definitely reach out to us so that we can support you with the next steps. Um, You know, it's important to be discipled. It's important to be in a community, in a church that is Bible believing so that you can be strengthened in your um, your in your walk, in your Christian walk. Amen. Amen. And so we want to say God bless you. And uh, we believe that God is going to do great things in your life as you have embarked upon this brand and spanking new journey. Amen. So you, you, you can come to fellowship with us. We meet every Friday at 7.30 at 9120 46th Street in Jamaica, Queens. And at the same place on Sunday morning. That is at 10 a.m. That is 9120 146 Street in Jamaica, Queens, in New York. Amen. And Prophetess Morsi going to uh, tell you uh, right now, she's transitioned to uh, to Houston, Texas. So Texas, so here is the woman of God coming, and her husband. Amen. And he's a, he, he's, he, he's a man that breeds and teaches and lives evangelism, goes to the state and goes to different states and carry uh, evangelism. Amen. Praise God. And we have just arrived and we are, our trip is coming up again. So we want you to sow. You throw it, God's going to grow it. You sow it. Amen. And uh, my cash app is there, dollar sign JC in Duncan 2. And Prophetess Mercy cash app is there. Amen. Is dollar sign Aaron uh, uppercase N and Mercy lowercase. Amen. Aaron, lowercase, uppercase, N, and mercy, lowercase, so seed. You saw it. God is going to grow it. And I, I, and I decree now that which held you back is destroyed. I begin to see uh, the enemy with some abdomen regions. You have a condition in your abdomen. You're healed. You're loose. You're loose to go forward and tell somebody heart murmurs, heart problems, you're healed. Breast cancer. You're healed by the stripes of Jesus. Is your day of deliverance has come. Whatever condition, we speak healing and deliverance in the name of the Lord Jesus. Receive your healing and your deliverance and your blessing in Jesus' name. Receive it. So go and tell somebody today. Tell somebody. Talk to somebody. Amen. They come to you with sad stories. I know someone. I know a man. I know somebody that can heal a man. His name is Christ Jesus. He paid a price for you already. And if you receive him, you can be saved. And I'm going to pray for you. So I'm going to pray for you. Amen. And so we come to tell you that we love you. And Jesus loves you. And Jesus is Lord. Shalom.
Shalom.